Hello and welcome to my sick den where only cameras and cookies can cure my woes. But those woes are real, my friend, because digicams are a pain and we're gonna talk about it. So, this is my camera graveyard. I have some really wonderful cameras here that just don't work. My FineCam SL3. This is an inspo from Sophie Lee, who um, just kills it with her fine cams. And I wanted one really badly. I bought two. They both don't work. Nikon Coolpix S4. Sorry, unless it's absolutely verified that it's working, don't buy it. They're notorious for dying. This one is a heartbreaker, the Zoom 1500 from Minolta. Um, Snappiness actually has this camera and his is working. Lucky. Unfortunately, mine does not work. Um, it used to, and then it just died really suddenly, but this was a modular camera. There's a cord that goes between these two. It's just killer, awesome early tech. Anyway, this is becoming more of a what's in my camera bag kind of a video, except in my camera graveyard. I do want to say we'll also talk about how to shop for digicams. It's like a long, long overdue video and much requested video. So we'll cover all the things about where to look for them, what to look for, things to look out for, etc., etc. So the realities of digicam. They're old, early digital cameras. So a lot of them are not working like this beautiful TX1, which is actually working, but just in a very finicky fashion. Such a cool little camera. First and foremost, shopping for digicams. You have your, your sort of big retailer type stores, your MPBs, your KEHs. You usually think of MPB maybe for like more new digi digital cameras. You think of KEH maybe for film cameras, but they both do have older digicams. Actually, KEH has more older digicams than MPB. I've been pushing KEH for like a, a, like a good year or two to be like, <clears throat> digicams are the next thing. You should get some more digicams on your inventory. I think they thought I was crazy. That being said, all camera stores usually have like a used department as well. And I think everyone is getting a little bit more hip to the digicam thing. So I am seeing more digicams pop up on like Autorama used, b &H used. And then of course you have your Facebook marketplaces, which can be a really good place because maybe there's like some more like older folks who just don't care about those cameras and will give you a good deal. But there's also a lot of scams on there. So I don't know, just use your better judgment. Um, eBay is obviously a place to look. I would just say wherever you get your camera, if it's not gonna be from like a, a KH or an MPB type store where you have a return policy, just make sure that they verify either in a DM or in some written fashion that you have a record of that the camera is working. Uh, that way, even if it's a no return policy, you can return it. I have never gotten pushback from someone who said that the camera was working. And then when I got it and it didn't, I would just like send a message back and be like, yo, sorry, it's not working. And, um, they've always taken it back and eBay in particular, even if they were like, no, sorry, I'm not going to take it back. eBay will step in and get you your money back. Other places to look, shop Goodwill, Amazon, actually, like I've gotten some old digicams off Amazon from like third party sellers on there. I, this has maybe changed now because I feel like, again, the trend is catching on and people are becoming more hip to it. But for a while, I was able to get like used cameras on Amazon for pretty cheap. Salvation Army, obviously, Used Photo Pro, Midwest Photo, Facebook Marketplace, Mercari, Craigslist, your friend network. Do you know someone who might have a mom that doesn't care about that digicam anymore? I have a buy sell section on our Discord, so that's always a good place to go to because you also have a little bit more assurance. It's a member, it's a good person, it's gonna be someone who's more interested in getting you the right camera than just making money. Estate sales, estate sales are great. I love estate sales. The other thing to do is just obviously put in the model number of the camera that you're looking for in Google, go to the shopping tab and just see where it populates as um, being the place where that camera is being sold. That is how I found my Canon 1D, which was literally, it made no sense. It just popped up on Google as being sold through Autorama. I, I don't know how I lucked into that one. That was just fluke. And yeah, just again, buy from sellers who either have a return policy, get it in writing if you know they don't, that it's working and then you can still return it. And then just assess your appetite for the gamble. Like if you're a Vegas fan and you just wanna throw the dice, go for it. 
a lot of the times it will work out. Some of the times it won't. Just know whether or not you're willing to throw that money away. Um, for example, I'm bidding on an item that is untested right now and I know where my threshold for pain is and I'm just like putting my top dollar in and we'll see if I get it or if I don't. Other tips, um, look for bundles. Like that is the way to find great cameras that may otherwise on their own be charging a lot more. So for example, the Canon SD1000, I ended up getting for $5 because I got it in a bundle with five other cameras. It wasn't listed as part of the bundle. I just was going through bundles and I identified visually that the SD1000 was in there and it was working as verified by the seller. Also be willing to take a gamble on a camera that I don't talk about or someone else doesn't talk about. There are so many old Digicams and honestly, there isn't a lot of gap between them. There are um, plenty that were great and may not just be like mainstream. Other things to look out for, ideally when you're buying a camera, try to target ones that have media included because this media is old and janky and sometimes expensive if you don't have it included with the camera. So for example, we have Olympus XD cards here. So these are, um, you know, proprietary Olympus media. And then I actually got mine with this adapter, which is a CF card adapter, an MACF10 adapter. I love this thing. The um, CF card just slides right in here. So it goes into the CF card reader like that. <coughs> oh boy. Most of these like multi-card readers like this um, will have all the different formats. So you don't even need this CF card reader. I just happen to have a different, anyway. Long story personal to me, but I like my CF card adapter. That being said, things like this will have a um, multi thing. So this will take mini SD, SD, SDH, C, MS, micro SD, CF, MD, and XD. So this XD one is down here and it just slips right in and it can read it like that. I love this one. This one is from Acme. I will put links down below. I don't even know if they still make this, but I will put links to ones that I recommend as far as card readers down below. This one is so nice because it just has a little prong um, right out of it. No cords, nothing like that. Unlike this, which is, um, you know, one of my later purchases. This has a cord. I don't know. It's just a little messier. Now this one, you want to make sure that the card reader will read smart media. This is a wacky format here. Um, it is thin as a piece of paper and some of these card readers do not read smart media. Um, in fact, most of them don't. So I actually think I have a special reader for that. A lot of the cameras are also able to read from the camera with a patch cord directly to your computer. So that's another way to download media, but you just wanna check to see that that's possible with the camera that you get. I tend to still stick with actual dedicated media readers and media cards. Let's see, we also have CF cards. These are very, very common and I would say probably the most frequently used from the generation of cameras that I tend to gravitate towards. So CF cards are great. And then of course we have your standard SDs. Now, a little watch out for a lot of these old cameras is that the SD cards that they can read are usually not high capacity. So this is a two megabyte or sorry, two gigabyte SD card. This is a great one to have. Again, link down below in the description. The files take up no space. So that'll still last you for like hundreds of shots. I always recommend just getting a two pack of the two gigabytes so that you have that standing by for any old cameras that take SD cards. Then you get into phones. I'm not even gonna really cover this because this gets into a whole other media format. It's not, a, it looks like an SD card, but it's like an SDHC or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but it is a very specific memory card to be able to hold the images off of an old cell phone. And then of course, who could forget the good old Sony memory stick. These Sony memory sticks are easy to come by, often come supplied with cameras. So yeah, again, just keep your eye out for that. And thankfully these readers that um, usually come with the multi-format will almost always include the Sony uh, memory stick. The only one that it really usually does not include is smart media. Um, and that's a really early format. So you're talking like early 2000s cameras are using that. Um, but as soon as they went into CF, 
Sony memory stick, XDs, all of that. They, they dropped the smart media card. So, you know, this is a little bit more uh, unique. So batteries, you are almost always going to have to get new batteries for old cameras. Even if your camera comes supplied with a battery, um, like they almost always are going to cause issues or have problems. So I always recommend getting new batteries. Um, these ones are great. I mean, again, don't get this camera because, you know, it doesn't work. But um, cameras like this that took double A batteries are keepers because they, um, you know, are easily supplied. You just want to make sure you're getting rechargeable batteries, not lithium batteries, because lithium batteries will get burned through in these old cameras pretty much universally super fast and it's super wasteful so just get rechargeable batteries and they will last a lot longer in the camera the camera will behave much better and you won't be spending as much money in the long run so a lot of cameras in the early 2000s will be powered also by um like an ac adapter and these are really easy if your camera doesn't come with one they're really easy to find on amazon they're cheap and they're generic and they work great. So this is another way for a lot of old cameras to be charged, which is great because then you can use it for multiple cameras. Another common issue for these older cameras, especially point and shoots. Um, this one is not in the graveyard. I don't know why it's here right now. A lot of these older point and shoot cameras that have zooming lenses that are attached to the body that creates a vacuum, it'll suck in dust and sometimes you will have dust particles on the sensor which will become visible. Cameras that are very notorious for this are the Ricoh GR line. The Sony RX line also has that issue. Like pretty much any of these, um, you know, retractable lens cameras are going to be prone to that. You can put it at f16 or f8 shoot it against a bright sky, putting it on manual focus so it's not trying to focus on anything, and you will see um, whether there are dust particles on the sensor that way. It will show up as like a little black dot. Now, just know that it will only show up usually at high apertures with deep depth of field. Um, so if you're shooting wide open all the time and you're not seeing it, just don't worry about it, it's fine. Um, if you're shooting at f8, f16, you're doing a lot of landscape photography, something like that, and you're seeing dust particles, that is going to be an issue. So you can either clone it out in Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever. There's the vacuum method for those who are brave. I will place a link down below. Or you can return it to the seller and say, listen, sorry, there is actually sensor dust here and it's just not going to work for my purposes. Of course, in a lot of my videos, I get those comments, right? Like, oh, thanks for driving up the price on this camera. Guys, that's just what it is, right? Like, that's the world we live in. I'm sorry. It's not me. It is the market. It is demand and supply. And these are old cameras and they are no longer made. So yeah, prices are going to go up. But also be patient. Like, you don't just go read about a camera and go on eBay and expect to find it for $5. That's not how it works. How it works is patience, persistence, and haggling. Like, that's how I get my cameras. Put your alerts on eBay, go on Facebook and monitor that from time to time, and wait. If you wait, you will find a bargain. Like, it's not always going to be tomorrow. It might be two weeks. It might be three months. Like, I have a friend who's been hunting for a camera for over a year. That's more dedication than I have personally because I'm kind of impatient, but I have enough patience to get me to a place where in my mind I know what I'm willing to pay for a camera and I will find it. I am a pit bull when it comes to finding what I want. And um, yeah, so if you want something, just wait it out and it will most likely pop onto your radar at the price that you're looking to pay. Now, the one other thing I will say is the most common question I get on DMs, on Instagram, on comments on YouTube, and I mean, the volume of this is wild. Which Digicam would you recommend for me? I want something that has a film look, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know what to say. I have a whole channel dedicated to this. My best advice is do your homework, look at shots, on my Instagram feed, which is literally just pages and pages and pages of pictures from these cameras. Look at what you are willing to put in. Do you want to post process? Do you not want to post process? Are you a black and white shooter, a color shooter? There are so many places to look to get 
clarity on what will work for you. So I'm going to link another video of mine here with more resources where you can look for that. Thanks, Mom. There is no better way to find the camera that works for you that um, I can recommend other than just picking one up and starting. That is the best way to go. And if you don't like it, throw it on eBay. Someone else will take it. Um, so that's all I have for you today. Thank you guys for coming by, and I will see you in the next video.